before I take you to the Adam and Eve story, which would be the third civilization, something really extraordinary happened during the time I was doing this research. So what happened was uh, me and my brother were both single and we live in a house together. And I was in the kitchen and I noticed he was in the backyard doing some maintenance on his paraglider motor. So I came into my room, shut the door, and I started studying some of the Hebrew translations for this project. And some time went by and I heard the door pop open and I was hit with like this really cool burst of air which sometimes will happen if you open the door real fast, but this door opened up really slow. So I thought, okay, it's my brother. He's going to come in, um, try to sneak up on me and, and scare me. Then I felt him come up behind me, and I thought, well, maybe he's looking at what I'm doing, and he puts his hand on my right shoulder. So I didn't want to break my concentration, so I, I finished up uh, what I was doing, and I was getting ready to turn around and I felt his hand leave my right shoulder. And when I turned around, there was nobody there. So I get up, I go into the kitchen and he's still out there. So it's some type of di uh, divine visit. Uh, when I was touched, it did kind of feel like um, endearment or, or a loving touch and my room became extremely peaceful and and so did I and then I felt kind of energized for the but the purpose of this divine um, encounter I don't know at this point what that was about but if there's anything that develops from this I will post it Okay, so now let's go to the Adam and Eve story. In the last video, which is part two, I talked about the second civilization, the beginning of the regeneration of earth after Lucifer's flood. It does appear that the story about the second civilization ended with on the seventh day, God rested, but actually, it ended with sentence four, and it says these are the generations, and generations also can mean history. So it says these are the generations in the history of the first and second civilizations. Sentence five is the beginning of the story of Adam and Eve. But when you read it, you wouldn't know that because the word earth is used. But remember in Hebrew, the word earth is a partiated word or a partial piece of land. So it is talking about the Garden of Eden and the Eden area. And it says every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. In other words, there was no vegetation in that area. And then God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, which means the Earth is still in its regeneration cycle from the first worldwide flood that destroyed the first civilization. And then it goes on and says, there was not a man to till the ground. The word till does mean to work the ground, but in Hebrew, it also means bond servant or slave. So it's, it says there was not a man to be used as a bond servant or slave to till the ground. A man was needed to work in the Garden of Eden and protect it. And you would think that God would took a man from the second civilization, which wasn't corrupted, and put him in Eden. But probably what happened was we know that the first nation was ruled by Lucifer and it became perverted and very corrupted. And there were survivors from that civilization, which means they were perverted and corrupted. And also Lucifer survived. So I'm sure that Lucifer went out and reestablished a nation or other nations or cities. And eventually 
the uncorrupted civilization or the second civilization mingled in with them and they became corrupted. So there had to be a new species of man created to put in the Garden of Eden. At the time that Adam was created, the earth had not experienced rain. But in the next sentence, it does tell us that the earth was being watered by a mist that was coming from underground. So it could be a strong possibility that that first global flood that was caused by water coming from under the ground and this mist that's watering the earth was caused by a tectonic shift. It goes from immediately from six to the Senate seven and man is created but he was not put in the Garden of Eden yet. Because right here in this next sentence, it says, and Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there he put the man who he had formed. So man was already created. And then after the creation, he was kept somewhere and then put into the garden. In this sentence, the word planet means to establish, and the word garden means a protected, fenced-in area. The question is, what were they being, or what was the Garden of Eden being protected from? I'm going to take us directly to where Adam and Eve are now living outside of Eden, but still under the protection of God. So there does appear that there's some additional security measures in place before you get to the main fence that surrounded Eden. Genesis 4, sentence 8, and that's where Adam and Eve's sons are now grown, and Cain becomes extremely jealous of his brother Abel, and then eventually murders him. So for Cain's punishment, God forces Cain out into society. And as you know by now, that society he was forced in was very corrupt. Between Genesis 4, 8 and 4, 14, that's where God passes judgment on Cain. And Cain realizes that he's going to be forced into the outside world and they're going to kill him. So Cain says, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that find me shall slay me. So he's saying he's always going to have to be in hiding and running for persecution, and that he's going to be wandering from place to place without ever having a home or a job. And then eventually somebody's going to kill him. Before Cain is forced to live in the outside world, God puts a mark on Cain so that nobody would harm him or try to kill him. Now, it's not known what this mark was, but it may have been connected with the Garden of Eden. And since there was no recorded intrusion or attempted intrusion into the Garden of Eden by the outside world, except for Lucifer being a symbol of the snake, the symbol or the mark on Cain must have powerful symbolic meaning, enough to make somebody think twice before they tried to harm or kill him. As Adam and Eve's children grew up, they began to leave the Eden area to live in the outside world. And they did marry people on the outside world. Not everybody was completely corrupted. There was a few pockets of people that stay to their self to try to stay away from this corruption. And a lot of this corruption was caused by the sons of God. Now, this was a misinterpretation. This should be a small g with an S. So it should say that the sons of the gods saw the daughters of men that they were fair. In other, other words, they were beautiful and they were sexually attracted to them. And then they took wives or which they choose. In other words, 
they forced these women, no matter if they were married or have families or what the situation was, and they abducted them and forced them to be wives. In Genesis 6, 4, this first sentence should read, there were already giants in the earth in those days, which means that the sons of the gods were the ones that corrupted the first and second civilization, and they took females from the first and second civilization and made them wives, and those wives bare giants. So that's how the giants were already here before Adam and Eve. And then also after that, when the sons of gods had sex with the daughters of men, they bare children to them, the same which, the same became mighty men, which were of old and men of renown. The word mighty men, we're gonna look how mighty men is translated in the book of Job by different Bibles. The New Living Translation, instead of using the word giant, they use the word warrior. In King James Bible, it was cor correct the way they placed the meaning, giant. International Standard Version, he runs over me like a mighty warrior, which actually should read, runs over me like a giant. And then the Darby Bible Translation, they use mighty man instead of giant. And then in Young's literal translation, the word mighty one was used in the place of giant. So the children that they gave birth to were giants and it says men of renown and it's talking about the, the famous giants like Gilgamesh, Nimrod in the Bible, who was a giant, and then we all know about Goliath and his brothers. In other ancient texts that run parallel to the story, it does explain that the women could not have a natural birth because these babies were so large, so they had to have C-sections. It also explains that these giants when they died, the evil spirits that we have today are the spirits from these dead giants. Before the flood of Noah, it says that, and God saw the wickedness and perversion was great in the earth, which means it was global. And a lot of this perversion was sexual perversion with men, women, children, and animals. And then the sons of God began manipulating and splicing DNA with animals and humans together. So they had messed with creation to a point that it was completely corrupted, except for a few people. And one of them was Noah. Uh, the scripture says that Noah was perfect in all of his ways. Other words, his DNA had not been affected or manipulated. Okay, this ends the story of the third civilization, and I did leave parts out of the Adam and Eve story because I wanted to touch mostly on the civilization, how it got started, and how it spread it out, and what happened to that civilization. So now we know that the um, double security around Eden and the Garden of Eden was to keep the giants out, and the sons of gods out. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. This is Tony with Earth Files, Earth History, signing out.